Hello. In this video, we are going to discuss about the Drupal directory structure. So as you know, Drupal provides us a lot of functionality and other kind of plugins and themes and other things when you install Drupal. To arrange all these things from a programmer's point of view or developer's point of view, all these things are organized in a directory structure over here. So when you'll be working later on or you plan to do some programming theme development and all you will come across where to put what things and even while working with drupal you will come across certain uh, points that where what goes or what parts of uh, the directory structure you can play around with what is to be left as it is and so on so this is a drupal core which i have extracted locally over here just for understanding purpose and same as what you are going to see when you install your Drupal on a web server or on a local machine. So here these are the directories which you will see when you install Drupal and these are files. Some of them are hidden files. The ones which are starting with dot are hidden files. Now in these most of the files we do not need to disturb. They remain as it is. At the most, you might do some changes to HD access, which is basically a configuration for uh, handling access rights and all. Basically, you can do some uh, web server config overrides. That is again later on. The main file, which is index.php, this is through which everything is handled. So every call that uh, you make to your Drupal setup goes through this. And few other files are there out of which here in the directory structure you will see we have directories or folders core modules profile sites themes and vendor now the Drupal as I said comes as a big package so over here core is where the whole of Drupal resides primarily the whole Drupal core code resides and this is the place which we do not want to disturb fine until unless you know what you are doing you want to do the core Drupal development till that time we do not disturb this area fine so here there are assets like uh, you might have heard of something like jQuery so inside that you can see there are assets like jQuery and few other things which Drupal uses for its functionality then there is some configuration related stuff includes different libraries common functions required during the startup and all those include files are there libraries are there which Drupal will be using right some core libraries and so on okay fine then one thing that you will be able to understand is the modules if you remember Drupal has inbuilt modules fine uh, what are inbuilt modules uh, the extra functionality that Drupal provides so a lot of functionality is provided as modules any of those which you want to use you can enable and disable these are the core Drupal modules and they will come bundled with the Drupal package so if you go to the extend section in your Drupal installation you will find the same list over here again these are not to be disturbed they are to be left as it is then profiles profiles are basically the installation uh, profiles which you come across during the starting of your installation we had used the standard installation which you can see over here there are few other profiles which are there and we had seen this during our installation itself then there are certain scripts which can be used for development purpose and many other things the inbuilt themes that are there for uh, which comes bundled with drupal so these are the inbuilt themes again these are not to be disturbed they will be here only so this is your where the whole core of Drupal resides. 
So Drupal uses some third party uh, softwares which it uses for its functionality again. Fine. So we might have heard of things like Symfony and Twig. Even some people use Composer for managing Drupal. So Composer is here, Symfony is here, Twig is here. So these are the third party vendor based things which Drupal uses. They go into here. Again, this directory is also not to be disturbed. Now, if you notice that we have modules, themes and profiles again over here. This is the place where you will be able to put your own modules or the downloaded modules or themes. So if you go to the modules directory, right now it won't be having anything. There is a readme. If you download any module that will get installed over here right? and Drupal can use that module if uh, the very interesting part is when you are exploring most of these have a readme and if you simply open the readme you can actually get a good information about this so here it says placing downloaded and custom modules in this directory separates the downloaded custom modules from drupal core right this is useful whenever we want to update drupal and all so our core is separate and what changes we made or what we have added is separate so similarly for themes themes will go into this it has a readme which will specify the similar things then there is sites drupal can handle multi-site stuff and all apart from that even if it is a single installation inside sites as you'll start working you will have different files for different settings this is uh, the default settings.php is the file which is renamed and copied as settings.php and inside this your host name, database name, password, etc. go into this. Your uploaded files and other things will also go into sites. Okay. And profiles are the custom defined profiles similar to what we discussed about core profiles. This is something similar to this. So the point to understand is initially when we are working with Drupal, the places where we'll put our modules is this, where we put our themes is this. There is sites where uh, user uploaded files and other things go into it. Few other direct, uh, directories might get created into it when you start using your Drupal installation actually. And one more directory that you might want to create would be called as libraries fine it will be created here itself fine so like core has this directory called as libraries which where lib here it is mentioned as lib here outside any external library which you want to install like a javascript library or something else which you would be wanting to use or sometimes some modules require some libraries that those libraries will go into this particular one. So when you are working on a actual server, you could simply create a folder called as libraries into that. And this is where your extra added libraries will go. So this is a small overview of your Drupal directory structure. And so in a next video, we will see how to update the core of Drupal and which files here will be useful in that particular scenario.